this could be in the house of the Lord. Let's continue our, our study in the keys to personal revival. I want you to turn again to 2 Chronicles chapter number 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Got just a little bit of difference in my, my hearing here, Samuel. On, uh, sounds a little echoey, so I don't know if I need to be balanced here just a bit somehow or another. Uh, if you can figure that out for me, that's, that sounds a bit better right there. He probably just waved his hand around and I just said, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, reminds me when my papa Tinwell took his dentures into the, uh, to get them fixed after they weren't fitting right, and, and my cousin Tim, uh, he said, well, what did they do to him? And he said, I don't know, they took them out. And they went out of the room, and then they just a little bit, they came back in, put them back in, and, I, it, it, and they felt better. And I said, well, Grandpa, they just went out there and waved them around in the hallway and brought them and put them back in for you. <laughs> and then we'll forget to say it. Right? So I hope, hopefully you just didn't wave your hands around. You can uh, push a button or two or help something out on that. Anyway, 2 Chronicles chapter number 14. Glenn Justice was on the diving squad. At the same time that I was on the swim team for Lincoln Park High School way back in the day, the diving competition in our division always occurred about midway through the swim meet. I remember watching Glenn on one particular competition. He was a fairly, fairly accomplished diver uh, for, for high school level. He, uh, you know, they shake their arms and shake their legs to loosen the muscles, and as he mounted the diving board, he appeared to be at deep concentration. <clears throat> the dive called for a forward combination of a full tuck to half pipe to lay out to entry. He smoothly walked the plank toward the water. Every muscle was in perfect obedience, every movement in absolute synchronization. The man was in total control. He didn't need anyone's help. He gracefully leaped into the air, and then it happened. He apparently became confused, and he piped when he should have tucked. And he knew it. And you could see it on his face. <laughs> and you know how one of those moments when they kind of freeze the frame on television? You know, it was like he was kind of dangling there for like a second. Just, just for that moment. And the man who just a second ago was in total control. Now he's out of control. The man who needed no help was now helpless to avoid the inevitable. As he tumbled toward the surface of the water, you know what happened? <laughs> Belly smack. He was red all the way. I mean, just blister red. Most of us live our lives believing that we are in control. Right. And that we can kind of handle things. Yeah, we'll have a bump and a knock and a, uh, hit a pothole every once in a while, but, but basically we can, we can handle what comes our way. We, we live our lives believing that we really don't need anyone's help. Maybe even that we don't need a close relationship with God because we've been doing fairly well with our kind of distant relation to God. Our mundane, mediocre relation with God. We don't need personal revival in our souls because we're pretty well getting along okay. But then suddenly Without warning, the realities of life will happen, and we will find ourselves helpless. And often it hurts like a bad belly smacker. You know, most of us know what one of those feels like. Well, there's a man in the Old Testament who, like us, sometimes found himself helpless without even trying Everything was going along just fine until. Let's look at uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 14.
14, verse number 8. And Asa, King Asa, had an army of men that bear targets. You can understand that throat armor that uh, those guys wore back in those days. They had throat armor, spears, and out of Judah, there were 300,000. Let's kind of add these up, uh, do a little math here. Out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows, 200,000 and four score, 200, four score thousand. That's like 280,000 plus 300,000. So we're looking at all these mighty men of valor, about a little over a half million man army. That ought to make you feel pretty comfortable. You know, we, we've, got the, we've got the military hardware around here. This is, this, is, this is going okay. Now, King Asa was the great-grandson of Solomon. This is about 35 years after Israel was split by civil war. He reigned in South Israel, which is called Judah. And according to 2 Chronicles 14.2, Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. So he's on the right track, and he's kind of in, in the groove, and everything's going along fairly well. Asa's half-million-man army, however, left him feeling like he was in control. Left him feeling like he was in control. What does the Bible say about pride? Pride goes before a... Pride in our ability to handle our life will end up us falling flat on our face. Right. If the Bible is true. So, how to become helpless without even trying. Here's how it happened in Asa's day. He adds up, in verse number 8, he adds up like 580,000 guys. He feels really comfortable. And then look what happens in verse number 9. And there came out against them Zerah, the Ethiopian, with a host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots, and came unto Mereshah. Then Asa went out against them. They set the battle in array in the valley of Zebatha at Mereshah. Now, somebody who knows math real good, 1,000 times 1,000, what does that give you? How many does Asa have? 560, 580,000. This guy shows up with a million man army. Almost twice as much as Asa had. Plus 300 tanks. Back in that day, it was chariots. So he has these chariots, this military hardware, twice as many men. Asa found himself surrounded by the realities of life. Even though he was doing that which was right in the sight of God, he found himself surrounded by the realities of life. Now let's, let's think about this. He had initiated a revival. We talked about him in previous uh, messages in this series. Asa was a good guy. He had initiated a revival by commanding all of God's people to seek the Lord. And when he steps up and says, we're going to get back with God, we're going to do the right thing here, then guess who shows up? Twice as many with 300 tanks against him. Satan attacks. Right. Let me tell you what, if you ever decide to get serious about personal revival in your life, who's going to attack you? God. When we get serious about doing something good for God, Satan is going to be all over us to try to discourage us and to keep us from doing what we know God wants us to do in our personal life. So here's Asa. He finds himself helpless. He finds his own resources inadequate. Lisa Singleton lives in Bowling Green, Kentucky with her 
two and a half year old twin sons at the time this story occurred. She works all day with her mother and sister in a struggling little typesetting shop, comes home every night to a second day's worth of work at home. This is like 2.45 a.m., February 8th, a number of years ago. This is what she writes. Just the dishes, and I can go to bed. Our portable dishwasher was a hand-me-down from a friend who was nearly 15 years old. I loaded the dishes and reached for the cord to plug it into the wall socket. I started to attach the hose to the faucet. Well, portable models now you hook up to, to the faucet. When suddenly, the, seat, the steel faucet grabbed my hand. I could feel the heat of the electricity through the gold chains around my neck. I tried to pull away, but nothing happened. I was helpless. I knew, I knew this was it. And I was dying. See, sometimes you're just going along with life trying to do the best you can. And the reality of life slaps you down. Apparently, Asa, he did not provoke, he did not incite, he did not goad the Ethiopians. According to the first part of verse number 9, there just came out against them Zira, the Ethiopian, with a host of a thousand thousand, a million man army, and 300 chariots, and they came to Marisha, and they were going to attack Asa. You know how, you know how to become helpless without even trying? Just get up in the morning. Just get up in the morning, and you never know what that day is going to bring. You just never know when you're going to have an accident, when something's going to happen, when you're going to get the phone call that changes your life. Just get up in the morning, especially after trying to do something for God. Say amen. amen. When you try to do something for God, when you get serious about personal revival in our lives, that's when Satan is going to start getting on our case. Now, figuratively speaking, we never know from one day to the next when Zira and his million man army is going to show up and pull up in our driveway. And, and if we start seeking God in personal revival, then you, we never know. And it, it might be death, it might be divorce, it might be illness, it might be a teenage pregnancy, it might be marital stress, it might be a financial reversal, it might be relationship problems, it might be unemployment, or it might be dishwasher electrocution. We just never know. But what should we do when we are helpless? Answer, seek the God of all help. Say amen. Mm -hmm. Many times the Lord puts us in situations where only he can help. Right. It's one of the ways that God lets us know we need personal. See, it's time to seek the Lord because only He can help when we are helpless. How to become helpless without trying? Just wake up in the morning. How to get help from the God of all help? Look at verse number 11. Verse number 11, chapter 14. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and he said, Lord, it's nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you. And in your name we go against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let not man prevail against you. It was Psalm 94 where the psalmist wrote, Unless the Lord had given me help, I would soon have dwelt in the silence of death. If it wasn't for the Lord by my side, where would I be? Asa knew how to get help from the God of all help. Look at, look at verse number 11. He cried fervently in prayer to the Lord. That's what we do first. Cry fervently in prayer. Lord, it's nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Then he admitted his total dependence on God, the middle part of his prayer. Help us, O oh Lord our God, for we rest on you. And then he committed himself 
to doing the will of God. The last part of his prayer, in your name, we go against this multitude. So we cry fervently when we find ourselves in a helpless situation where we just don't have the power to get out of it, to do anything about it. We cry fervently unto the Lord. We admit our total dependence upon Him, and then we commit ourselves to doing the Lord's will. There are spiritual keys that we need to have in our possession to open the door of personal revival in our lives. The first key to personal revival is humility. We have to humbly admit to ourselves and to God, we are not where we ought to be with the Lord. Humility is the first key to personal revival. Then we second key to personal revival is prayer. We have to reopen a dialogue between us and God, unclog the channels of communication, and start talking again with the Lord. And the third key to personal revival is actively seeking God. And we see in King Asa's life the example of seeking God actively. The whole key of Asa's importance in the scripture can be found in that one phrase. He sought the Lord. How do you spell help when you are helpless? G O. Day. Y'all been playing that wheel of fortune thing. <laughs> How do you spell help when you are helpless? G O D. See the lives and the lessons learned by these ancient kings of Israel. They're examples for us. And, and humility, prayer, seeking, these are the keys that we have to possess by, and walk in that walk with God to have that personal revival. We have to walk with God in humility, prayer, and actively seeking Him. King Asa realized that if God didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. He looked to the Lord actively seeking Him. It's time to seek the Lord because only He can help us when we are helpless. How to receive God's help and when? With the odds against us? Look at verse number 12. So the Lord struck the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar, and the Ethiopians were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves. For they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host, and they carried away very much spoil. And they struck all the cities round about Kirar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them. And Israel spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil in them. We can win, we can have personal revival against overwhelming odds, but it takes humility, it takes prayer, it takes seeking the Lord's help. Actively seeking the Lord's help. Amen. Lisa Singleton, she tried to pull away. She couldn't pull her left hand from the dishwasher or her right hand from the steel faucet. Her life's strength was literally being sapped from her body by the electrocution. She later wrote that she seemed to separate from her body and hover near the kitchen ceiling looking down on the scene. She wrote, guttural moaning sounds started coming from the woman's mouth below. And the, and the moans were ugly and awful and loud. She'd better stop that, I thought, or she's going to wake the boys. And then something clicked. The boys, they were my boys. And at that point, she wrote, I began seeking God in prayer and calling on his name. The woman 
and below stirred. I watched in amazement as with superhuman strength she pulled the dishwasher across the floor. She pulled six inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, until the heavy black cord drew taut and pulled and pulled and finally pulled out of the socket on the wall. Even before I had landed, before my mind was able to function, I had the feeling that I was wrapped in the love and caring of God. Amen. I, I sensed with my whole being that God had saved me, that, that God was that superhuman strength. Thank you, Jesus. I whispered over Amen. and over. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God is always there. Say amen. Amen. How do we win when we're helpless? How do we win when we start seeking God and Satan attacks us and surrounds us? We let God fight the battles. Amen. We do everything we can in our power and we give it to the Lord. Say amen. amen. Asa placed himself into the hands of the God of all help. Verse number 12. You see that in, in that verse? So the Lord smote the Ethiopians. Verse number 13. The enemy could not recover themselves because they were destroyed before the Lord. Verse 14. The fear of the Lord came upon the enemy. See, when we place ourselves into the hands of the God of all help. He helps. Amen. He will deliver. It's time to seek the Lord because only He can help us when we are helpless. And you know what the Lord wants us to have? The Lord wants us to have that spirit of revival. He wants us to have that closeness. And, and you know, we talk about a spirit of revival because in, in human terms, we kind of ebb and flow. You know, some years we're just really close to the Lord. Some years, eh, not so much. We ebb and flow, so we call it revival. But God wants us to stay close with Him all time. Say, Amen. Amen. But He's not going to make us. He's not going to make us. He's going to offer us that intimacy, that power, that strength. But He's not going to make us. So, how do we savor the victory of God's help? This is good. Look at verse number 15. Look at verse number 15. They, they struck also the tents uh, of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance. And watch here, they returned to Jerusalem. Now skip down to chapter 15 and look at verse number 10 and see what happened. So victorious Judah under King Asa they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, seven hundred oxen, seven thousand sheep. Now watch verse 12. And they entered into a covenant and they promised to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. So they come back to home base. They return to Jerusalem. They come back to the holy city. They actually come to the house of worship. They come to the house of the Lord, the house of God. They offer thanksgiving. They offer worship. They offer praise. They give all of these offerings unto the Lord, recognizing he gets the glory for everything he's done in their lives. They sought the Lord with all their heart and with all their soul and promised to do so from that point forward. I'd say a revival broke out right there. How do we savor the victory of God's help? How do we... Continuously have the spirit of revival. 
always come home. Amen? Mm -hmm. Always come home. Always be faithful to the house of worship in God's church. Always give worship and thanksgiving and praise to the Lord for everything that's good in our lives. Amen? Mm -hmm. We offer our possessions for the master's use. And we seek the Lord God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if we will do that on a continual basis, then we will experience the closeness to our Lord like never before. Say amen. Amen. It's time to seek the Lord because only he can help us when we are helpless. And we are helpless to generate personal revival. See, I'll just amp it up. I'll just rev myself up. No. You don't do that. You humble yourself. You pray. You actively seek the Lord. And then in His mercy and His grace, He grants a spirit of revival. Without God, Satan will hold down and dampen and hinder the revival fires in our but if we'll continually seek Him, even when the odds are overwhelming against us, we continually seek Him, the Lord will be found faithful. You believe that? Amen. You really believe that? Amen. Stand up if you believe that. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for historical like that of King Asa, who did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Here's a guy that was doing the right thing and helping others do the right thing and seeking you and praying to you and worshiping you, and, and you still allowed this situation which totally overwhelmed him and the people. You allowed that to come their way just to reinforce what they were already doing. Seeking, actively seeking the Lord and being totally dependent on you. And I thank you, Lord, that you did deliver. Reinforced your glorious name to all of your people. And I pray that you would do the same in our lives. That you would help us to humble ourselves, pray, seek your face actively, seek diligently, seek you. As you promised, when we seek after you with all of our heart, you will Granted, O Lord, to all of us, in Jesus' name. With every head bowed and eyes continually closed, let me talk to you. You may have recently experienced the death of someone very close to you. Perhaps you or your husband or wife are talking about divorce, experiencing marital distress. May be a lingering illness or disease afflicts you. None of us is immune to a financial reversal, to relationship problems and heartbreaks, unemployment. Maybe you're a mother or daddy who simply feels inadequate when you're trying to deal with your children, either as teenage children or even adult children. In a certain sense, all of these things are like Lisa Singleton's dishwasher electrocution. They just, they grab hold of your life and sap the strength out of you until you feel like you're going to die. Well, you ought to do what she did. At the point of helplessness, she sought the Lord in prayer and called upon his name. Prayer altars open to all who Altar is for his people, not just for sinners.
sinners to become saved and part of the family of faith, but for God's people to talk with the Lord, to have their prayers heard and answered. You come and ask for the Lord's help. Saddest thing I know is for a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, to go through life and die without becoming the child of God. Today is the day of salvation. You can know the Lord in a personal relationship. It's not religion. It's a relationship. Take a step of faith. Come forward and let us introduce you to the Lord. If you'd be willing, come to the altar. Seek God in faith. He will be found. It's wise. Wouldn't it be wise to go ahead and come? Would you come? Would you come? So, Trey, what number do we have? Page 734, be strong in the Lord. Let's sing that. Please come. Be strong in the Lord and be of good courage. Your mighty defender is always the same. Mount up with wings as the eagle ascending. Victory is yours when you call his name. Be strong. Be strong.